Hi, I'm Elizabeth Jackson and welcome to Foreign Correspondent. Fancy wearing a line of clothing made from fish snot. Now before you turn up your nose at the idea you might want to learn a little more about the hagfish. Not only could it hold a clue to producing ultra-strong, high-performance and eco-friendly fiber, but this deep-sea creature may also prove to be our ancestor. Here's our New Zealand correspondent Dominique Schwartz. The hagfish is an ancient eel-like scavenger which lives at the bottom of the world's oceans. It protects itself from sharks and other predators by emitting jets of choking suffocating slime. It's the stuff of little boys' dreams, and a continuing fascination for Dr. Vincent Simpson from Wellington's T. Papa Museum. They've been around for at least 300 million years. As a reference point, dinosaurs disappeared about 50 million years ago. They are probably the ancestors of all the vertebrates on Earth. So that includes us, which makes them very unique. Dr. Simpson was the lead scientist on a deep-sea animal diversity study which captured for the first time graphic pictures of hagfish under attack. In one video, a shark bites a hagfish, only to immediately let it go and swim off gagging, its gills and mouth covered by a blanket of mucus. It's no wonder the other non-scientific name for Eptatratus cirhatus is the slime or snot eel. On both sides of their bodies, they have got slime glands and slime pores. We are talking above 100 slime pores on each side. And when you actually see it, you realize directly this is something very very special that from such a tiny amount of product that's expelled from the hagfish, you produce such a large quantity of slime. It's like several times its weight of slime because it's combining with seawater. And it's that slime which has captured the imagination of biomaterial scientists at the University of Guelph in Canada. Among them, Associate Professor. Dr. Douglas Fudge. Hagfish slime is not your usual slime because it's reinforced with fibers, and it's those fibers that we were most interested in. It turns out that those fibers, there's tens of thousands of them in a liter of slime, and those fibers are sort of like silk in their mechanical properties. They are very strong. And what we were doing is using hagfish slime threads as an alternative model to spider silk for our efforts to make new protein based materials. Dr. Fudge says there are 82 known species of hagfish. None have been successfully bred in captivity, so farming them for their slime is unlikely. Instead, scientists are trying to artificially replicate the protein and structure of hagfish slime to create new high-performance and environmentally friendly fabrics. We see these artificial protein fibers as a sustainable alternative to petroleum-based fibers like nylon and Kevlar. Dr. Fudge says there's still a long way to go before slime becomes high fashion, but he believes fibers modeled on hagfish mucus could potentially be used in everything from clothing and furniture to bulletproof vests. Already, hagfish skin is used in leather accessories such as wallets and belts. And a hagfish export industry has sprung up in New Zealand to cater for the South Korean appetite for its flesh. They are bizarre animals, and the more we learn about them, the more we are amazed by them. T.E. Papas Doctors Inson says the hagfish highlights the importance of protecting deep-sea environments with who knows how many as yet undiscovered species. Species which like the hagfish, could throw light on our past and help us create our future. The hagfish is, I think, a very neat example of an animal from the deep sea which can look quite scary and a little bit repulsive, but if you go beyond that, you realize that those animals are essential parts of our marine ecosystem. And on top of that, there is the history of the evolution behind those organisms that are absolutely fascinating. Almost as fascinating as the thought of marketing a line of hagfish or snot inspired clothing. For Correspondence Report, this is Dominique Schwartz.